Say you don't like it, no No, you don't like it Let me read it, let me read Say you don't like it, no No, you don't like it Let me read it, let me read Say you don't like it, no No, you don't like it Let me read it, let me read Say you don't like it, no, you don't like it Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Rewriters Room. We are the men with the pen. I am one third of our illustrious trio, Armand Sather, aka the John Cena of journalism, the Brock Lesnar of broadcasting, the Roman Reigns of rhetoric, and the Paul Heyman of podcasting. I'm here with my guys, as always. CC, how you feeling, my brother? What's good? It's CC, best rapper and producer in the whole wide world, God body, because I consume healthy products and do tile curls, benevolent servant to the earth and philanthropist. And every phrase I say is a gem like amethyst. You could put any nigga next to me. Dope ass women going to whisper each other. Girl, I don't mean to be rude, but who the fuck mans is this? I may talk a lot, but only got one thing to say. Love yourself and keep going. You are the world. Give all you can. Take care of your body, your people and your land. Wait, where my nigga Chan? Going on at Grandpa Chan, two ends reporting live from the mid car, leader of the mid car mafia. Um, we are on the precipice of our mid car messiah's biggest match to date? Question mark at Crown Jule uh, against the American Nightmare, the the main card, the main card's faith. And I'm just excited that we're kind of getting that Cyber Survivor Series style match back. I do like a champion versus champion match. It's always fun. Especially when it's not a unification match, like it's purely off the pride. I like that. Don't necessarily love the crown jewel belt. I don't know why they keep trying to push this quasi mid card, quasi main event belt, but they do. But I'm excited to see. I feel like anything Gunther does is always major and always puts over the mid card. So I'm excited to see what they do with this match. You know, are they going to? Cody Rhodes only goes all out, so I know he's going to go out. But I'm turned to like match length story i'm interested to see like what they do since this isn't like gunther versus cody at mania after gunther won the world Rumble, boys i think a lot of people thought we might see do you think people outside of the outside of gunther ludwig and cody will get involved i could uh, see good i could see whoever each of their respective next feud getting involved if maybe they like do something on smackdown where it's like oh finn balor is messing with gunther and then i mean that's raw i guess and then at crown jewel judgment day messes with gunther i could see something like that but i think like i was kind of alluding to i think they're just gonna keep it kind of straight up i feel like the crown jewel show is more of like a showcase and i feel like they're just gonna have them probably just wrestle straight up and i would Personally, early money, I think Cody's eating that pin. Um, but I could see maybe some chicanery if there's some, like, again, quasi-storyline that's bubbling up. What about you, Arma? Yeah, um, I I think it, it'll probably stick to Ludwig in terms of the in-match stuff. I think after, we might get a KO beating down Cody type situation. I saw a report that CM Punk is supposed to face Gunther for the world title at Survivor Series, but I don't think he would. He's a baby face. So I don't see a reason. And him and Gunther don't have beef yet, so I don't see a reason for him to get involved in the match. He's not even on TV right now. Um, and they typically don't do much Gaga in their main events at the recent Saudi shows. Like, Roman, LA Knight, yeah, you had the blunt eye getting involved, but, like, that was the most tame interference of theirs that I've ever seen. They were very um, not effective. Um, the last main event was, uh, what was it? The one before that, 2022. Well, Logan Roman, Cody? R- Roman, Cody? R- 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 Roman Logan actually had a lot of interference, actually. So let, let me take that back. Let but me, that's let also me Logan that Paul is in a main event of a match and you need to fluff it up, I would say. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take my statement back, but I think with this being their first traditional clash, um, first proper clash, rather, I think that it'll be mostly clean. I do think Gunther's going to win as well, because the thing that I think we all believe they're building up to is one day them contending over a world title. And I think if Gunther, were to win a Royal Rumble and be challenging Cody, him having a victory over Cody's head 
as his challenger would just make it that much more intriguing. And he's also the heel in the situation. So it would just make more sense unless they somehow flip alignments whenever they do that. I I don't see Cody turning heel anytime soon. So I don't know, but I do think that they should have, uh, have Gunther um, will win that match. It would be a huge look for him. Um, and Cody's the type of nigga we know Cody loves to lose to service a story. So I feel like he would push for it as well. And it would help to elevate that world heavy, heavyweight title even more. We've had some really great holders of it. Seth drew for five minutes, uh, Damian, uh, Gunther. Um, but I think the world champion beating the WWE champion, especially with who the WWE champion currently is, would just further establish like, all right, as much as people want to say, this is the B title. This is the couldn't beat Roman title. This is this is this is legitimate. Like this person has an argument for being the top champion in the company. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's cool. I I, I think the crown jewel title looks good. I love the, that they're doing a brand versus brand, champion versus champion type thing because um, everyone's wanted that to come back for Survivor Series. Wait, Survivor you say you Series. think the title looks good? The crown jewel one, yeah. You like that shit? Yeah, that's I like your, it. It's not ugly. It's just unnecessary. Like the green belt, that's I don't love, is. but it's just like I know Gunther or Cody is not walking around with this next week. So it's like, why are we? It's like the one that Braun won. It's like it's not an ugly belt in a vacuum, but it's like, does anyone know where that belt's at right now? My thing is like, if you was gonna go crazy with a belt, you could have went like, I would have expected something. That, it felt like. It felt like you went crazy, and that was like, you know what it is? It feels like the first, like, first one to three ideas, maybe. And I'm it like, feels, mm, you should have got to, like, idea number 12. You low-key, like, and this is probably too hot for the radio, so if you have to bleep this out, that's fine. I bet you they're trying to prime us for, like, a Saudi title. Like, a legitimate, like, branded crown jewel title. I feel like they're. Well, yeah, well, like, yeah, that's what this is. This is this is gonna be a a thing that happens every year. No, but like gets defended, like is like I am the crown jewel champion. I feel like that is the only reason yeah. you keep making these belts is you're trying to warm people up to the Wait, idea. So that, you know well, what that means. Well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't uh, agree with the. They keep trying to do it. They did it in 2019. They're doing it now. Like they didn't acknowledge that green belt Braun had after he won it. And this they one's not have. green, also. Like this, this one's black. I don't know if you can see. Oh, the thing looks yeah. green. I don't know why I thought the belt itself was green. My yeah, bad. no, no. There's, there's just some green within it. Like it's it's nice. And I also saw it in person at Bad Blood. So I it I, probably I, looked I, better there. It probably it looked better looked there, don't it? in person. Yeah, yeah. I, I I it's cool, but um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they could do something like that in the future. I like Wait. that they're trying to make these crown jewel shows like add something to it because a lot of people uh, look at look at it as like. Look at those shows as like, oh, it like they don't matter. But Nothing all the happens, matches, yeah. the, all the matches that happen there, there's story built into them. Even if it's a quick one, like mm -hmm. there's story. Like back in the day, they just did random shit at those shows. Yeah. Like That's primarily, and then like a couple matches had some story. But now they're working it into yeah. the, the the programming. So and titles so to, change hands and stuff, and you know, that, yeah. that, it's definitely much more of like impactful now. And I guess I'm I'm half joking about a Saudi title. I just feel like it is something that it feels like, like kind of like you said, like there was thought put into this. This isn't yeah. just like a toy that they're trying to mix a quick buck off. This seems like something that they want to at least, like you said, have prestige, if nothing yeah. else. It is something well, to be talked about. So two things, two things. One, to our mom's point, I was going to say that exact same thing, uh, which is that they, I was going to ask you, I was going to, I was going to ask you guys, like, have you noticed <clears throat> Ever since uh, your boy left, they went from the whole, you know, random spectacle of two, two or three 60 year olds in the ring or whatever. And then random matches to like just like paring it down, not spending as much on the spectacle and then just continuing a story. And I have my own hunch as to like one of the motivations to that, which is like they don't want to be in that deal in the first place. They're trying to get out of it. So they're just not going to try to spend it. They're going to try to spend this little money as they can on it they'll make that title to make it a big thing but if you think about it outside of that title what money are they spending on that that's like different than a regular show or a regular P ple they're just paying wrestlers to go there they're gonna set it up it's gonna look nice but ain't nothing about to be crazy ain't nobody about to get no like you know cody gonna get special pyro roman gonna get special pyro but like yeah you know and 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 they've been giving them more lately like they did a smackdown out there yeah. um for um what was it 
Most Rather than invest all the did. money in the show, they did. They just invest in Super the experience. Show? They just no, set up a, shop. They go there and set up shop. It was King, King, King Queen of the Ring, yeah, yeah. And they, and then for Crown Jewel, that they're gonna do a, a raw after it. So like they're actually exactly. giving them more than they used to. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't really know the, the the terms of it or how with how they feel toward it. But I, I like that they're making it canon within everything yeah. happening. Like so, like you actually kind of have to pay attention to what happens at Crown Jewel. And speaking That's of nice. that, this is my second point, and I'll, end it here. I'll, I'll put the button on it here. To continue the fantasy book on what Shannon was saying earlier, actually, no, fuck it. Make the Crown Jewel uh, championship something that they defend. Fuck 24-7, whatever. Bring in some shit out at they, as they, de- like, at Night of Champions or whatever, defend the Crown Jewel belt or whatever, you know what I mean? And we already know who, who we got to represent it. If you think about somebody who needs to represent a championship of prestige, of lavishness, of luxury, of he who got it. It's only one person you really got to look at. You know what I mean? He's he's sort of a lone wolf. They call that man Baron Corbin. <laughs> man, that is such a Baron Corbin title, dude. That's a Baron Corbin title. That bro. is a Baron Corbin ass title. Like you're, and he got his name all over that shit, bro. You can just see in the all uh-huh. white. Man. I have no idea how I've done this show with y'all for four years and <laughs> let all this Baron Corbin fantasy every t- booking. Every time you think we're gonna have a regular small. conversation, I'm like, let me just let me just sneak it it's in. It's always Baron because I know he's not gonna see it coming. It's always. I thought I, I thought you was about to say the Rock should hold this title. You see how I, I was building it up. That that, that that then you said Lone Wolf, and for some reason I thought about Braun Breaker, and then Same. yo, <laughs> what if Corbin won it? Was having a celebration the next night. And then The Rock brought out a ref, said, you're about to have a match with me right now. Rock bottomed them and took the championship. Then The Rock would have two fake titles, and it would be a bit, <laughs> it would be a bit obnoxious. Before we get too carried away, ladies and gentlemen, um, you can subscribe to the A-Show RNC to hear all of our content from the A-Show, J5 and Meals, The War Report, Cyrus and Quan, and subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com backslash the A-Show RNC. Um, of course, as you know, we are rewriting the entire Bloodline story. Last week, we left off with the Edge match, the John Cena match, the Finn Balor match, and the infusion of Brock Lesnar. Now, before we get to this week's rewrite, you know we got to jump into some before we rewrite trivia led by your boy. Are you guys prepared for this trivia? Yeah, I'm prepared because you can't win this week. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. So given that we will be talking more about Brock Lesnar, I thought we'd do some Brock Lesnar trivia. Um, we've talked about him a lot over the course of our last few seasons, but I'm sure you guys probably forgot some things as well. So this may end up being a cool refresher for you guys. So question one, pretty simple, but you know, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, you old. Um, so when did Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns have their first singles match? Just year? Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. Let, let's go. Let, let, uh, what show did Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns have their first match? Monday Night Raw. No. Friday Night SmackDown. No. Uh, it was Survivor Series. Summer? Not Survivor Series. No. Was it WrestleMania? It was WrestleMania. Do you know which WrestleMania? WrestleMania. This I'm so bad. Thirty one. Yes, I was go. just gonna guess thirty one. Because you know crazy. why? You know why? I was like, because <laughs> the the reason why I knew was I was like this was after uh, WrestleMania thirty because WrestleMania thirty just sticks. It's a, such a milestone in WWE history. I like use it as a, a post <laughs> to like kind of keep yeah. track of things. And when I think about when they they had their thing, I'm like, yeah, that happened after. So I was just like, let me just go with the first one after that. Yeah. Roman won the Royal Rumble. Uh, Rock came out, held up his hand. They both got booed in Philly. And then Roman Reigns took on Brock Lesnar. And of course, Seth Rollins cashed in, you know, the, the heist of the I century, all, all that good stuff. Yeah. All right. yeah. So That's DC their first current. match. Won. Yeah. First match they ever had. Yep. All right. So CC currently has one point. Oh, wait, no, no. Wait. It's tied. You, well, right? well, yeah, Chance said Mania, and then CC said 31. So you both yeah. get a point for that. All right. This is where it gets a little, might get a little tougher. We'll, we'll see how y'all fare. How many world titles has Brock Lesnar won? Yeah, 
Ooh, world titles. This includes the universal title? Seven? WWE, World Heavyweight, Universal. Seven? No, not seven. Nine? Six. Not nine. Eight? Not eight. Six? Not six. Five? He's no, a five. ten-time champion? Eleven? Boom, there you go, oh, Channing. Ten? ten. Oh. Yeah. Damn, I knew it was, was low. Was, but... Ah, damn. I thought it was lower than that. Shout out to Brock. But I guess the <laughs> yeah, last couple of WWE is probably pushing him over. Yeah, because yeah. he he like yeah. just got it a couple. I keep for, I keep forgetting that this, it was this section he wins it damn near twice. Like between these next two episodes, it's yeah. Like... yeah yeah he he was he for was no getting reason. active. <laughs> yeah. Now the uh, score is currently two one Chan, and this question could either put Chan over or CC could come back. It all depends on how things shake out. So. Who did Brock Lesnar defeat to win all of his world titles? That there is a there is a number of points to be gained here. I'm not going to tell you how many how many points, Dang. but there is. Like you're saying, name all of the people. Name every single person Brock Lesnar beat to, to win Reigns, oh, to win his world Seth titles. Rollins. Hold on, uh, not Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins is correct. Seth Rollins, so two. Big E, Bobby Lashley. God damn it! Right. Shut, up. On, shut right, up! Shut up! Right. You shut your okay. goddamn the mouth. The biggest of shows. Uh no, not big show. JBL, not JBL. The Rock, Kurt Angle. The The Rock, yes, and not Kurt Angle, it. yes. Ra- so Ch- Ch- Ray Mysterio. Chan has five. CCS three. Jonathan Cena. Uh, Cena, yes. God damn six. it! I said it wasn't Mysterio, right? Someone's at Ray Mysterio. Right? Someone's at Ray Mysterio Eddie no, Guerrero. Ray Mysterio. Eddie Guerrero. No, Eddie Guerrero beat him. Randall Orton. Oh yeah. Not Randy Orton. Uh, Jeff Hardy. Did he beat not Jeff Hardy? Hardy. Uh, he tossed Jeff Hardy's un- last round. Not Undertaker. Not Undertaker, right? Undertaker? Not Undertaker, no. Uh, Goldisberg? Uh, Goldberg, yes. God yes, Goldis the Bergs. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Bray Wyatt. How many? The Fiend? We've got to be a damn near not 10 Bray at this Bray Wyatt. Uh, no, Drew McIntyre? Bray? Kofi Kingston. No, no. And uh, yes. So, God damn right, yeah, so, yeah, so, 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 so Chan <laughs> is up 8-3. Eight to three. Oh, no. Uh, there's more? He's beaten more people? Um, hold on. It was it was two one. So that's oh yeah, no, that is every I think that's everyone. Hold on. One. That no, there's like... there's 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 one one more person, but Chan is already winning by a landslide. So yeah. Kevin Owens? Not Kevin Owens, no. Well, I mean, uh, no, yeah, no, you know, he he never Kevin Owens yeah. wasn't the champion when he when he right. won it. Um Shit, I'm trying to think. Seamus? Not Seamus, no. Well, <laughs> Alberto <there's>... Del Rio. <laughs> Fuck no. I, they, 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 they wish. I, I they were like on, only the company at the same time for like two years. Yeah, I think WWE wish Brock was still around when Alberto Del Rio was around. <laughs> um, yeah. Dang, who was this last person? There's mm. Yeah, there's one, one, one guy left. Hulk Hogan? Not Hulk Hogan, no. <laughs> Party's over, Grandpa. Oh, man. Is this, is this, can, is this, are we talking this Brock's first run or second run? S- second run. Mm-hmm. Got it. I feel like. Batista? Not Batista. No, not Batista. How, how fucking dare you? Sorry. How uh, dare you? I just can't, I'm just Triple trying H? to think of names. Not it, Triple H. No, not Triple H. Yeah, Triple H would never let that happen. You're right. He would never remember that. <laughs> I knew it wasn't that nigga. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm thinking, because I know he. Booker T? No. No, I wish. That I'm would just be throwing cool out names at this point. I'm just trying to think it's of that not, time. Not Finn, not Brian. He wrestled them, but he ain't beat either of them for a title, I don't think. Nah, that was a Survivor Series match against Daniel Bryan. Yeah, Brian was champ versus champ when he went yeah. when Brock when Brock faced Finn, he was defending the title against him. This we were so close to gender gender v Brock. Nasty. Hell no. Just throwing shit out there. All right, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you it same. was it was Braun Strowman. Oh, Bro, I, I thought that, but I was like, there's wow. no way that happens. Now, even though CeCe can't win, there are some special circumstances with three of these people that uh, Brock defeated to win the title. Kurt Angle, Braun Strowman, and Seth Rollins. Do you guys know the special circumstances with these people? Like, not that they all have in common, but for each one? Yeah, for each individual you, wait, Who was it again, you said? Kurt Angle, Braun Strowman, so and like Seth Rollins. they have, they all have one thing in common, or each of them? No, has no, no. Thing. Each of them oh, have, okay. have like individual special circumstances so in their, Kurt, in their was title his, matches. Was his? Oh, was his first? Was that special guest? No, Kurt wasn't his first. It was Rock. 
Damn, you're right. Brock, Brock, Brock at uh, SummerSlam 2002. I don't, my brain doesn't acknowledge that. We don't it's accept okay. that. It's awesome. <laughs> um, Kurt Angle, we have a special guest referee? No. And th- 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 this is not stipulations. It, it, it oh, can be... wait, was, was Kurt Angle his first defense? No. Oh, God damn it. Did uh, he s- submit Kurt Angle? Uh, no, he did not. Was that the first time he ever did first a mania move match? off the top of rope? Angle was his first Mania match, so that's a good answer. You, you guys might not get this one either. God he beat Kurt Angle for the title on two different occasions. At, at, wow, at, I see what you're at okay. WrestleMania 19 and then on SmackDown in a classic Iron Man match, one of my favorite Iron Man matches, one of my favorite matches of all time, that, Bro, that Iron Man match. Young Brock used to be getting busy. Oh, like, right, absolutely. the kids don't know because right now he basically just hits, like, his five moves and gets up, gets out of here. But, like, young Brock, here comes the pain, next big thing, was out here working. Like CeCe said, bro, that moonsault was in his moveset, not just, yeah. like, a special occasion. Yeah, yeah. Um, How about Braun? This Braun? was... I'll, 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 I'll give some hints. This was 2018. Is that the first Universal title? No, that's Goldberg. No, no. Is but, but, but you're right though, he, he did beat Goldberg to win the Universal for his first time. You're right, but um, you guys might not get to see the right was Braun the match where he was like under that table the whole time. Was that the Braun match? I love that. That, match. that, that was did so happen in a match that they were in, yeah. But, but that was that Samoa Joe great balls of fire, yeah. Match, you know? It was it was a fatal four way at SummerSlam 2017, yeah. Gotcha, that was fun, yeah. Um, I can't even remember this <clears throat> happening. So I, I it's, it's okay. Don't. It was, I believe it was Super Showdown 2018. Mm. Roman Reigns had to vacate the title for cancer. So Brock beat Braun in a title for in a match for the vacant Universal Championship. That's why and, it doesn't make sense. Because I'm yeah. like, when was Braun the champion? If it's Braun, I don't remember that feud yeah. at all. But yeah. that's what yeah, you yeah, tricked yeah, us. Yeah. You tricked a us. Bit. Uh, and this last one, and this one is significant. Seth Rollins there's there is an achievement that I, I as of now I don't know if anyone else has it ever done Seth this Rollins the only person to beat uh Brock Lesnar for the championship more times than he lost the championship to Brock Lesnar oh actually yes I think yeah, yeah absolutely that, he up to one right I believe that is true it's too long, count right? the triple threat. Right. So that, that that is a special circumstance. That's not what I was thinking but yeah, of. Uh, but is it like that he cashed in on him? No. Boom. So oh. they're oh wow. Look they're at that. they're the only guys to have cashed in on, on each other. Each other. That's beautiful. Wrestling is a yeah. love story. Yeah. Yeah. So CC <laughs> wins our trivia this week. Don't know what the record is. All I know is I still you know, have the Chan? most wins. You, like, I think you mean Chan. I'm on Chan. Chan. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Chan, Chan wins yeah. trivia this week. Again, it don't matter because I'm still in the lead. I'm still undefeated. But, you know, great job, fellas. So we're going to jump into our rewrite for this week. When we left off, we left off at Roman Reigns defeating Finn Balor and retaining his Universal Championship at Extreme Rules. And we are heading towards Crown Jewel, where Roman Reigns took on Brock Lesnar and the entire dramatic, emotional saga of being Paul Heyman's, like, who, who whose side is Paul Heyman really on? And that leads into some very interesting things as well. Seth Rollins gets involved. Bobby Lashley gets involved. It's just a, a lot of things. But, yeah, we're doing the lead-up to Royal Rumble, 2002 so whoever would like i mean 2022 wow so whoever wants to start uh, with their rewrite feel free i can go um so to give you a little catch up on mine um for the most part it's been basically the similar beats the stories have been different the main thing is emotionally rome is in a much more paranoid place he's just checked jimmy um about basically messing up and him kind of be worried about loyalty so Jimmy, Jay, Paul Heyman are backstage talking. Um, and Jay is basically saying what I said. He's like, you know, Roman's getting paranoid, he's tripping. He's like, we're all champs. He should be, you know, super happy. But he's worried about everything. Like, I just don't get it. Um, and Paul's like, yeah, I've seen that. But don't worry about it. He's just under a lot of pressure because he's a champion. Just then, Brock Lesnar bursts into the room. Brock Lesnar's like, I need to talk to Paul. And Jimmy and Jay are like, no, you don't. Like, we're talking to Paul right now. Like, he don't work for you no more. 
They get in each other's face. Shoving match ensues. You know, it's getting crazy. Brock, Brock kind of beats them up, but nothing to the point where they couldn't wrestle because later that night, they do have a match for the um, SmackDown tag titles against Jinder Mahal and Dolph Ziggler. That's made up. That didn't actually happen, but in my world, it happened. Um, and so Adam Pierce shows up with a bunch of security. He's like, what's going on back here? Da, 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 da. And Brock is like, this is perfect. This is just who I needed to talk to. Paul and Adam. And Adam's like, what do you mean? He's like, let's go into your office and I'll tell you exactly what I have on my mind. Also keep in mind too, at this point, this is when like Brock is doing the quasi cowboy thing. So this is like fun Brock. So this is when Brock is actually like having a good time. So they're in um, the office. It's kind of, no one knows it happens. Camera cuts to black. Later that night, the bloodline are having their match against uh, Jinder Mahal and Dolph Ziggler. Um, they're about to go out, you know, through Gorilla, and Paul's like, hey, Roman, after this match, I need to talk to you about something. Like, it's really important. We need to talk about it. And Roman's like, if it's about Brock, I want to hear it. Because, of course, Roman has heard about what's happened earlier with the fight, and he's like, it's about Brock, I want to hear it. That's in the past. It doesn't matter. The match ensues. The Usos win. After the match, Uso comes, I mean, Adam Pierce comes out, and he's like, next week, we will have a tag team match to determine the, um, if Brock Lesnar gets a tag team, I mean, it's a WWE Universal title shot. We will have the Usos versus Brock Lesnar and a partner of his choosing. He can pick anyone he wants. Um, that person doesn't even have to agree. He can pick anyone. So the next SmackDown, there's a lot of kind of like backstage interviews, people talking, people kind of just like at catering and stuff, being basically being like, I don't want to be Brock's partner. Like, I hate Brock Lesnar. They focus specifically on people like Drew. Ben Balor, Kofi, Cesaro, people either have history with Brock or Brock has kind of been in their way to get stuff. And so they finally find Brock and he's like, hey, man, you worry. Like, no one wants to be your partner. Like, what are you going to do? And Brock's like, oh, I'm not worried about it. I know exactly who I want to be my partner. I have the perfect guy in mind. Um, so Usos come to the ring. Roman's again sitting at commentary, kind of watching. Brock comes out and they're like, all right, so who's going to be your partner? And Brock goes, oh, he's already out here. Paul, Paul Heyman, you're my partner. Get up here. And Paul's like, what? I'm not going to be your partner. He's like, come on, man, for old times' sake. You be my partner. We'll beat the Usos. I'll get to face Roman. And Paul's like, absolutely not. He's like, my tribal chief, I would never. I don't know what he's doing. Da, 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 da. And so Roman's pissed, but, you know, he can't do anything about it. These are the rules that were set up by Pierce. And so Brock Lesnar single-handedly defeats the Usos in a very kind of suplex city style fashion the whole time kind of taunting roman being like see these are your cousins huh having a good time you know bashing their head together cartoon stuff so at crown jewel it will be brock lesnar versus roman reigns for the universe title um roman doesn't trust paul he's like you know brock's been talking to you i really don't know what's going on with you right now and paul's like hey like don't worry about it brock's just trying to get in your head like there's nothing going on you know it's totally fine. At Crown Jewel, similar to what happens in the real storyline, there's the spot where the title gets kind of tossed into the ring ambiguously. No one knows who it is. Eventually, Roman gets the title and hits Paul. I mean, hits Brock wins the match. But at the end of this, instead of it just kind of being over, Roman is basically pissed at Paul because he's like, you didn't throw the title at me. You threw it in the middle and you should have thrown it directly to me. So you know what? You're fine. So he is no longer the advocate for the bloodline. Next SmackDown, Brock shows up pissed because obviously he knows he got screwed over, wrecks everyone, gets himself suspended. So Adam Pierce says this can't go on. At some point, every man's got to make a choice. So at day one, we will have Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman as a special guest referee. And so leading up to this match, you basically have the conflicting sides of Roman being like, you know, Paul, this is this is it. You can show your loyalty to your tribal chief. You can acknowledge me or you can go back to Brock. And then Brock's kind of doing this like, like ex-girlfriend type thing. Like, come on, Paul, you know, I know you like to mess around with other people, but you always come home. You know, you'll talk to Ryback or Punk, but you always come back to old Brock. Like, think about all the titles we've won. And they're showing you all the vignettes of like a young Brock and Paul and all this stuff they used to do. And so Paul is... Steam's not conflicted, but the times when he's with Brock, it does seem like there's a little bit of like, yeah, it was fun, like being your kind of like guy. 
And so at um, day one, Paul, for the most part, is calling the match down the middle, which is pissing Roman off and making Brock laugh. Um, the Usos try and come out, interfere, but get single-handedly stomped again by Brock. And towards the end of the match, Brock Lesnar has Roman Reigns up on his shoulders, but unfortunately, it's a low blow from Paul Heyman. Brock Lesnar is stunned, heartbroken, can't believe that Paul would do this to him. And Paul Heyman just looks at him and says, I don't acknowledge you as my tribal chief. Roman Reigns at this point does the ooh spears, get takes down Brock. Roman Reigns wins. Paul Heyman's back in the bloodline. Everything's good. Roman's in a great mood. He's like, this is exactly what I wanted. You proved your loyalty to me. He's like, Jimmy and Jay, you should be more like Paul. You should go out there and get me some wins. And so Paul's like, you know what? I'm going to get you another win. I'm going to go talk to Adam Pierce. I'm going to get you all for the Royal Rumble. There's no need in you having a match. Let's see who your challenger will be. So at the Royal Rumble, it's announced that um, Roman won't be having a match. He'll just get to watch the Rumble, see who wins. Also at the Royal Rumble, and this will be important for later, uh, there is still the fatal four-way match for the WWE Championship. That, and in this case, Ro Seth Rollins ends up winning that match. So Seth Rollins is our WWE champion in this. So at the Royal Rumble, Roman Reigns is, again, not supposed to be wrestling, so he's not in any way on TV. But unfortunately, as Roman does, at number 30, he does come out. Um, and at this point, the final four we have is Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, and our surprising Montez Ford, who started at number one and has made it all the way to the final four. But in Roman Reigns fashion, he wrecks everyone, ends up eliminating Drew last, and Roman Reigns has run the Royal Rumble, but he is also still the universal champion. So we are left with a cliffhanger. Who will face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania? Who will face Seth Rollins at WrestleMania? Only time will tell. Bro, I love, I love, love, love a heel champion winning the Royal Rumble. That shit is hilarious. I love that shit every time. I feel like they will almost did it with Brock that one year, and it was, like, really fun, but they didn't full send it, and I feel like having Roman do it would really, like, cement him. That's that exactly... Crazy. That's what I was going to say. Like, having Roman be the guy now and having him beat Brock as many times as he did, having him shit on Brock by doing what Brock couldn't do in the Royal Rumble is just masterful masterful and having payment be the special guest referee was also great too i love that yeah that was beautiful man well done well done uh you want to go next you see you want me to go yeah i got you i got you all right so here's what we're gonna do so <clears throat> if you remember at the start of my i said that um i had i was gonna have roman be like a little bit more of an aggressive type like uh mad emperor more in like so in his strategy less so in his uh sort of like emotion in the moment or whatever even though he can he could go there when he wants to or whatever but the whole point was that he's supposed to be more aggressive with how he approaches certain challenges whether they be already presented potential things that he sees coming up shit that he paranoid about whatever it is he handled that shit before he even become a problem, whatever. He nipped it in the bud, so to speak. So <clears throat> that involves a lot of scheming and whatnot and stuff that we don't see until it gets revealed and it's happening behind the scenes. So uh, I just wanted you to keep that in mind as we go through this. So like we get to, you know, after Extreme Rules or whatever, um, you know, Ro at this point, Roman figured that Brock would pop up, but um, he just... He just like really embarrassed <laughs> at the way that Brock that Brock just basically whooped the Usos ass or whatever. So um, you know, after Brock cuts his little, you know, free agent promo, um, then Reigns looks at Paul and he's like, do what you need to do with your friend. Cause remember in that promo, uh Brock's like, Hey, it's my friend Paul Heyman, who like, you know, is the reason why I'm a free agent, thanks to him. He was like just basically the way he was using Paul Heyman's name and their relationship made it seem like he actually was really grateful and thankful to Paul Heyman for something that he may or may not have done. So it just kind of, you know, obviously planted that seed of doubt. So that's where we get, you know, Rain saying like, okay, do what you need to do for your friend. 
or whatever. And he glares at him and looks at him like, oh, uh, whatever. And he just gets up and walks away. And, and, and this is like in their back room or whatever. And then Paul sort of looks at concerned at like what this could mean. So this is how we start this off and keep that in the back of your minds as, as we keep going. So next week they do the, you know, the whole loyalty questioning thing that they actually did or whatever. But this time when Paul cuts his promo, he's like a little less like cocky with it. And it's more like, talking to Brock as a friend, asking him to like consider things. He's like, I said, him think about it. Remember the times that they spent fishing that he, he was showing where he, he was hunting and how they would talk about certain things, life or whatever, and certain things that he wanted to accomplish in his career and how they had talked about Roman and how, uh, how even though Paul thought that Brock's potential was limitless, that Roman was his brick wall. And that was the one reign that he just could not involve or he couldn't avoid it rather. And um, Roman's face is like looking questioning as like Paul is cutting this promo or whatever. He's like, what the fuck or whatever. But then Paul like kind of, you know, steers it back and he ends with that whole like, you know, and then Roman's going to beat you. Um, that's not just a, 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 it's not a prediction. It's a spoiler. Believe that or whatever. So then that's how we end it. Then we go to the contract signing, right? Um, next week. We still get the Braun like laughing or whatever with the you know walking away and shit. And then instead of like Roman like trashing the ring in my version, he's like struggling to no sell that he's annoyed by it. Like he's clearly annoyed by this shit, but you can see he's kind of like trying to no sell it. And then Paul is like observant that he that this is like happening or whatever, but he's also like trying to put on the front because he doesn't want to like be seen by Roman as being seen as perceiving Roman as like being off or whatever. So he's like, yeah, my travel chief or whatever. So like they both front and right in front of each other or whatever, but they can both feel how like kind of uneasy they both feel or whatever. So like, that's sort of like how that ends. Like for me, I want, I thought the story should be more focused on sort of how like in real life in a friendship, the tension is a lot more subtle and weird but it's like just as pervasive as if it was like something really dramatic, but it's just like little stuff like that. Right. And that situation where they both front and, but like one friend should really call out the other friend and be like, Hey man, like what's really going on, but they both put on the front in a minute. So like, um, crown jewel still happens exact same way or whatever. I like to keep that exactly the way it is. Um, this way we can get Roman being really, really livid when Brock says the whole, I'm gonna kick your ass as soon as I see you thing. Because with Roman feeling like he sealed the the deal with Brock, especially he wanted to have Brock in his past just in general, he's just super livid that he would even feel like he could talk to Roman that way, bloodline and what it, that way, especially after he just won. He's like, didn't I just beat you? How can you kick my ass? Like, I've proven to you yet again that you cannot touch me. You must be emotional. You must not want to get with the program no matter what. You must not care. You Actually, you know what? You must care about your feelings more than you care about this company. Not me. That's why regardless whether I feel like you're a waste of my time for the sake of this company, I'm going to beat you into a living example of what happens when you disrespect the bloodline, which is the same as disrespecting this company because I love this company. So he's like basically telling him he's going to whoop his ass because he loves the company. <laughs> whatever. Like He's like now at this point trying to like manipulate like the execs and like, you know, the other wrestlers and shit saying like, yeah, like I, because this is like I said, like he's trying to think ahead or whatever. So if you think about it, like Brock is a, like sort of a world beater kind of person who like whoops everybody's ass. He's not really friends with anybody. So if anything, it would be better for Roman to gather support and be like, yeah, we should get this nigga out of here. Right, y'all. Right, right. And then like back away. <laughs> so you're not looking at him. It's basically the play here. He doing it with the crowd too. Cause he basically, this is damn near like a baby face, like promo, but he's being a, a real narcissist dickhead saying like, by disrespecting me, you disrespected the company. Like really is like very egotistical. So basically we get through that. Um, Next week, you know, Heyman's going to, you know, he's cutting his whole thing saying what Brock is going to do or whatever. Kayla's like, that's really crazy. It seems like you got a lot of wisdom for him that he could use. And you got to think about it. Like he's known as the wise man. And Paul's face just kind of drops as he's in the middle of that. And he's like, uh, he looks confident at Kayla. And he's like, listen, my wisdom for whatever it's worth only belongs to the tribal chief. And then he like brushes by Kayla or whatever. And she's like, geez, or whatever. So then like 
we basically fast forward through like the end of the year all the way up to like the rumble i want to keep that all the same because like i said like i want i want this to be bubbling in the background and one of the things i love about the bloodline stories is some things will happen and then and then things will like kind of just like go back to normal and then like something will happen again to like really like break the you know be the straw that breaks the camel's back or whatever even though little annoying things have happened along the way so we're gonna keep that the same rock out all the way to to um royal rumble brock uh actually ends up winning the rumble or whatever but as soon as he fucking wins literally as soon as he as he wins he like stands up to like celebrate a meet and immediately um <clears throat> you see the usos coming down but they already have like security and stuff or whatever um so they kind of get like pushed out in the back and they can't even come through like the hall because they kind of expected it and shit or whatever um so you just kind of think it's over or whatever um and then like cole is like you know going through his whole last like you know this is exactly um what uh roman reigns feared he's doing his end of the night things you know about to announce it and then he's like getting word or whatever and he's like i i'm i'm getting i'm getting word from backstage and like you know they're like what's happening what's happening he's like i don't i don't know but i'm getting word for can we just do we I, i'm here we have a feed from backstage and he just goes to backstage and then basically you see in like Brock's uh locker room or whatever, because he was gonna go straight there and go home or whatever. In Brock's locker room or whatever, he is just whooped. His locker room is whooped. It's like broken kendo sticks, steel chairs in that in that bit or whatever. Um, just a couple little weapons here and there or whatever. Um, nice little uh trash can, uh, you know, cause the E loves a nice little trash can or whatever, but he is whooped like bleeding out the top of his head and everything they like putting brock lesnar which you don't see like on a stretcher and stuff like that carrying him out pierce is like fucking like living and shit like that or whatever and he's like you know we need to go find a you know get roman or whatever uh don't let him out of this building or whatever they trying to find a bloodline or whatever meanwhile in the in the back you see the bloodline peeling off whatever leaving the arena already and then um Pierce is like, how did this happen? Like, I didn't tell anybody where the locker room was. And then he, like, follows, like, Brock out. And then the camera, like, stays there, like, kind of on the hallway where the room is. And you see out the shadows. Paul steps out. And after Pierce walks away and he pulls out two phones or whatever, and he tosses the blue one on the ground and he picks the red one up and he puts it up to his face and he says, call Roman Reigns with a smile or whatever. And, like, the thing is, is, like, the whole play here is that the wise man really did reserve his wisdom for the tribal chief. And he put Roman on early and let him know, like, listen, you can't really like stop Brock Lesnar once he's going to come hunting for you. He, The guy hunts. I went hunting with him. Once he once he locks on and he's going to get that target, he's going to get it. Even if he doesn't get it today, he'll go get it when it, when he's ready to go get it. And he'll get it. He'll, he never he never doesn't get it. But the thing is, is you need to you. You you won't stop him from getting what he hunted. He hunt, he's hunting, but you can either change what he's hunting for, or you can change his ability to hunt. And Roman basically took that and was like, you know what, you got a point. So like, he took it upon himself to basically whoop Brock Lesnar and take that chess move and like go first and like make Brock Lesnar like you know try to come after Roman angry in hopes that Ro that Brock will like be so wild in his approach that Roman can like basically the same way you can use your, somebody's momentum of them being like crazy running at you to kind of just swipe them out the way. That's sort of like the plan from like the strategy standpoint, but he was like, no, I'm whoop this nigga's ass off rip. And, and like the greatest thing about it is like Brock wins the rumble or whatever. And like the reason why I wanted to I cut this promo this way uh, or cut this one this way specifically for myself is because uh, uh, your old man's in them or whatever would always like, highlight Brock or whatever and we had to get back for the the Kofi thing so it's like nah nigga in your big moment too you gonna get your ass whooped too how about how about we have that by some men of color how about that how about that happens I really like the hunting motif like I like yeah. I like the idea that like like even like seeing obviously I mean maybe they do I don't know but like a, vin, like a video of like, like young Paul and Brock out in some snow hunting and then you could do like Paul and Roman hunting, or just like the idea that Brock is the hunter and the beast at the same time. Like, I think that's like a cool like play on his current the, thing now. He was doing the the farmer 
cowboy. Yeah, he's doing the cowboy like thing now. That's what I'm saying. So it's cool. He's like evolved into like, yeah, he's like the beast still inside of him. But now he's like also a hunter. I think it's just a cool way to like think of Brock. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Always with the great storytelling. All right. So if you remember where I left off, um, Adam Pierce had announced that Roman Reigns will be facing Brock Lesnar at Crown Jewel and that the match was put together by Paul Heyman, both of their friends. Roman Reigns went back to the locker room looking for Heyman, could not find him anywhere. He was distraught. So in the weeks leading up to Crown Jewel, Paul Heyman just completely disappears off the face of the earth. Roman Reigns can't get in contact with him. He's asking Jimmy, asking Jay, well, where's Paul? Like, well, what's happened to Paul? Have you talked to Paul? They don't know where he is. He, they're like, yeah. Roman's like, you'll find him, call Paul, or like, I'm going to blame you guys for what's going on. And so, you know, kind of back to the manipulating, gaslighting, being a tyrant. He's going to Adam Pierce, trying to find where Paul Heyman is. Adam Pierce doesn't know. Having his promo battles with Brock, uh, with Brock, Brock is confident, cocky, going into their match with Crown Jewel. He's like, all right, I, I already took your wise man from you. Like, now I'm about to take you your title from you. This is going to be my company again. You know, you ran it for a while, but it's mine. So, we we, we we get to Crown Jewel, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. Um, naturally, the Usos interfere, but Brock Lesnar dispatches of them again, completely gets, ri- gets rid of them. Now, and yeah, as you know, in, 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 a, in a Roman Reigns world title match, in a bloodline match, ref bump. <laughs> Roman's down, Brock is down. Paul Heyman runs out. Paul Heyman goes to, to where the, the timekeepers keep the title, grabs the title, and similar to what happened in real life, throws the title into the ring. He doesn't throw it at any individual guy. He just throws it into the ring. And if you remember from Crown Jewel, he's like, do it. Just do it. Do it. But you don't know who he's talking to. So Roman and Brock are both trying to crawl and grab the title. Uh, Brock ends up getting it. He stands up, but he turns around to a Uso super kick. And then Roman picks up the title, hits Brock over the head with it, spears him, pins him. Roman Reigns retains. He's he's there, um, you know, holding up the title, celebrating. Uh, looks at Heyman. Heyman looks at him. Roman calls him into the ring. Home, uh, and Heyman's very like apprehensive about getting in, but he gets in. They all celebrate. They all leave together. But Roman's like giving him weird looks the whole time. So suddenly they get back to SmackDown, and Roman Reigns comes out, does the acknowledge me. He's like, you know, we we have some business to handle. Survivor Series coming up, but before we get there, Paul. I got to ask you, well, where have you been? Well, it's, well, well, what's been going on? And Paul gets his very like queasy, scary, nervous type voice. He's like, oh, I was, I, you know, I was, I was just away. I was honestly scared of, you know, like what was, what, what was going on? My tribal chief, I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, make you angry in your presence. You were getting ready for a world title match. He was like, I was angrier that my wise man wasn't there. Well, like, well, why did you help arrange this title match for Brock Lesnar? He's like, Honestly, my tribal chief, Brock Lesnar, has been threatening me, threatening my life, threatening my family. And so I I, I kind of had to do these things so everyone would stay safe. And Roman's like, Paul, I, I can keep you safe. Like, j- just tell me what's going on and like, I, I can help you. And Paul's like, you know, um, Roman, I have to be honest with you. The only times you've beaten Brock Lesnar is in 2018 when Braun Strowman got involved in the match and tried to cash in. And then at Crown Jewel, when the Usos and I and I had to give you the title to get involved, you've never be, been able to beat Brock Lesnar by yourself. So I don't know if I can trust that that you that you'll protect me. And Roman Reigns gives him this like very just dark glare, like it's it's just it's bad, it's really bad. And so you know, Roman tries to compose himself, you know, gives Paul a hug, and says, you know, Paul, I, I appreciate you for being honest with me. I appreciate your service, but you're fired. Superman punches him. Uso super kick him. Uh, they're there about to beat Paul Heyman up, but Brock Lesnar comes out. Obviously, Brock Lesnar is super pissed because he lost the title at Crown Jewel. So they all fight. So Paul Heyman is out of the bloodline for this time period. Uh, the bloodline goes on to feud with New Day. Roman Reigns be- beats Big E, all that shit, blah, blah, blah whatever. Um, but Paul, Paul's not even, Paul's not aligned with Brock at this point. Paul is just kind of by himself, but Brock is continuing to threaten him. So we, we see like backstage, backstage segments with them. And then there's one very important SmackDown where Brock is in the ring, calls Paul Heyman out and he says, you need to get Adam Pierce to book me a rematch for the universal title at WWE day one. And Heyman's like, I knew that you were going to ask for that, but Pierce is not granting you a rematch for the title. You lost. You you weren't owed. You don't have a rematch clause. You weren't champion. So I I can't get you a title. So Brock grabs him, but he's like, but I do have something for you. 
you will be fighting for a world title at WWE day one. You'll be taking on Big E in a singles match. Um, and uh, the only reason that, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, so uh, Brock is taking on Big E and Brock's like, wait, so who, who's Roman Reigns defending his title against? Why can't I face Roman Reigns? And at WWE day one, the old chairman of the company, who I'm not going to name, but we all know who it is. He wanted to start a start a new initiative to kick the year off, kind of make things fun. Um, and so he has Bobby Lashley, who's on Raw, go over to SmackDown to face Roman Reigns for the Universal title at WWE Day One. Because everyone wanted Bobby to get a chance at Roman. So I'm, I'm going to write that into my story, but you know I'm going to have Bobby Lashley lose. And Bobby Lashley, of course, loses. So at WWE Day One, you got Roman versus Bobby. You have Brock versus um, Brock versus uh, Biggie. Brock beats Biggie for the title. Roman Reigns retains against um, uh, Bobby Lashley for the title. Heyman was was out at the ring with, with Brock, but like he wasn't helping him. He was kind of out there looking nervous, like c- kind of looking like he was being held, you know, captive. So we're leading up to the Royal Rumble, and Bobby Lashley wins a fatal four way match against. Um, Big E, uh, Seth Rollins, and Kevin Owens to, to get a title match against Brock Lesnar um, at the Royal Rumble, which happened in, in real life. Um, and then similar to Chan's rewrite and similar to what happened in real life, Roman's like, well, I don't have a challenger, so I guess I'm taking Royal Rumble off. And then Seth Rollins comes in, knocks on his door. So so we get that whole Shield story. I'm, I'm going to keep that exactly as it was. Um, but now we're getting these these Brock Lesnar and, and, and Bobby Lashley promos. And and here, like Paul is still being held captive. Paul is still like the very um, very hesitant advocate for for Brock Lesnar. So uh, we get to Royal Rumble. Same shit happens. Uh, Seth beats Roman by disqualification because Roman won't let go of the uh, fucking uh, guillotine. And then in Brock versus Bobby, it happens the exact same way. Roman comes out, spears Brock. Uh, walks over to Heyman, reach, uh, extends his hand, uh, asks for the title. Paul Heyman hands it over because she shook. He doesn't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, Roman hits Brock with the title. Bobby Lashley pins Brock Lesnar, wins the WWE title. Roman Reigns walks over to Paul Heyman and says, I told you that, that I could protect you from Brock Lesnar. And Paul's like, Oh shit, bet. So they walk up the ramp. Paul Heyman is is, is a wise man again. He's back acknowledging Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns forgives him for everything. He understands the, the situation that he was in, but he wanted to prove to Paul that that he was able to protect him. And now this builds into the lead up to WrestleMania, where it's like, where Roman's like, you know what, Paul, you're right. I've never beaten Brock Lesnar straight up. Cause I mean, it's true. In real life, Roman didn't get a clean win against Brock until um, WrestleMania 38. And so that's eventually that's what I'm going to eventually have happen at, at WrestleMania 38. But we still got some chapters to get there, the Goldberg stuff and all that. So, um, but yeah, that is that is my, my rewrite. Essentially, it's Heyman being a very Heyman being stuck in the middle, Brock threatening him rather than trying to be his friend. Heyman being held captive and pulling strings behind the scenes for Brock, getting him opportunity after opportunity. Brock winning the title from Big E still, um, but in, in a singles match, Bobby getting a one-off match against Roman Reigns so everyone could shut the fuck up about that. And then, boom, we're, we're, we're full steam ahead to uh, WrestleMania 38. So, I like how That's you that. wove in all, everyone else into, the, like, that was really, really, I love that. That was really, really yeah. good. It flo- yeah, it, it didn't feel, like, weird. It felt like, I was like, no. I felt like that's what I kind of should have watched or could have watched. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like, I'm sorry. and I'm um, and you know it, it's the the very interesting thing about what happened in real life is obviously Roman caught COVID so he didn't compete at day one and so I always wonder what was going to happen at day one was Brock going to win the title there like what could they have done so I completely stripped that COVID thing away Roman actually competes at day one um, has a cool match to start the year against Bobby Lashley and kind of gives him that momentum leading into when he wins his uh, wins his second. Uh, world championship uh, and beats Brock. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I like the whole, you've never beat Brock clean. Cause I, I remember very, very vividly at this point feeling like, man, we get in Roman Brock again. Like what is even the angle? And like, it, it felt like Brock just needed 
reasons to have to face Roman. Like it didn't feel like they're like Roman really wanted to even deal with him anymore. And so this gives Roman a reason to actually also want the beef. And I think it makes a much, much more interesting story. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Oh, and and I missed Brock still comes out and wins the Royal comes out at number 30, wins the Royal Rumble. But this time he like roughs up Adam Pierce in the back. He's like, put me into this Royal Rumble or I'm gonna beat you up and then I'm gonna go beat up your boss. I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna beat up everyone. I'm 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 gonna hold this company captive. I can't hold Heyman captive anymore, so I'm gonna hold the WWE captive. So put me into the Royal Rumble match. And so yeah, that's how he ends up there. So yeah, man, that's that. So uh, next week, listeners, we will be getting into, um, I mean, obviously the Roman and Brock story continues, but but we get a Goldberg match in, in between there um, at Elimination Chamber. They didn't do a fast lane in 2022. No, they didn't. So it's just Chamber and then it's Mania. So we are full steam ahead to uh, WrestleMania 38 uh, winners take all match. And yeah, that's going to be uh, it's going to be a good time. So looking forward to how we get there. But of course, as you know, we got to get into our not so pre write. This is us discussing recent happenings in WWE, AEW, the professional wrestling world, things that we like or things that we don't like. Um, I'll actually kick it off the, uh, this time. So, um, I don't know if you guys listen to the R&B singer. She goes by the name of uh, Money Long, uh, but she had a song called Hours and Hours, um, and it just seemed fitting for what I'm talking about. So as, as all wrestling fans know, Monday night raw has um, scaled down to two hours. Um, And admittedly, I I don't really like it much. It's um, you know, I think that they really did a great job over the last year, giving you a three hour show that you wanted to watch all of it. They advanced storylines, cool segments, longer matches, all that. And Raw had been that for like over a decade. So it was just something that we were used to. And I remember here uh, on the show, I think last season, we were talking about which show we liked watching the most. And for me, it was Monday Night Raw just because it was the longest. I could sit for three hours and just watch wrestling. I could just fully escape from the world and just like be consumed in the world of wrestling. And now it's like uh, Mondays, I also record Stay Busy. So like, by the time I get out the studio at 930, Raw is about to be over rather than me having being able to watch the last 90 minutes and then having to go back and watch, you know, the first 90. Now I get out. There's only 30 minutes left and I got to go back and watch the first hour and a half. It's just it's, it's just really weird. Um, and I, I really hope that, you know, the company is like paying attention, not not to what's being said online, but like I hope they kind of see the difference there. I, I like that they're they're doing a good job of like giving you little nuggets one week that then go to the next week. Like last week we saw, um, uh, what was it? I think they booked the Miz and R-Truth match uh, last week and they booked something else. So it's like, okay, like they're, they're, they're doing little things now that become like bigger things later on, um, which SmackDown does a good job of, but I don't know. I was just, I mean, maybe it's just adjusting. Uh, but I'm not I'm not a fan of the of, of the two hour thing. But, you know, a WWE has has very long money right now They they can do whatever they want. You know, we know this won't be permanent. They're going to be on Netflix soon. Uh, the whole three hour thing, like they kind of have some flexibility in what they're going to do. But I, I really hope that they like go back to the three hours because um, it was just very enjoyable for me. I think that's when Triple H really got to show how good of a of a, of a booker that he was. Um so yeah, not a n- not a fan of of two hour Monday Night Raws. I agree. Like it feels, it feels like it feels like hearing nigga damn episodes. To be honest, <laughs> if I'm being real, is what it feels like. I, that's just how I feel. That that's really it. <laughs> yeah, I I'm in the minority. I I do enjoy a shorter show. I just have like. I not, it's not an attention span thing. It's more so like if I sit down at this point in my life for three hours, I will fall asleep. So I can't do it. But I think part of it is actually what you're saying, CC. I don't think it's necessarily just that it's two hours. It's that they're still trying to do a three hour show in two hours. And it's not the same. Whereas like when you look at like SmackDown, SmackDown is like built to be two hours and has been. And so I think they're much more used to the beats. And I feel like with Raw, it's kind of like, 
okay, we're just trying to get through this. And so we're not like maximizing what their best two hours could be. Cause I think there is a two hour show that raw could do that could easily rival SmackDown. I just don't think they're doing it right now. And I think part of that is more so a function of just like logistics than the fact that they can't do, you know, an extra hour. But I do agree that like, it's so interesting. Like wrestling is like much deeper and like, fuller now i feel like just across the board especially at wwe but like we're getting less matches like the whole pay-per-views have less matches we're getting a shorter raw and it's just interesting how like i think those things are also conflicting with one another whereas like when it was just randy orton and john cena you could have done a two-hour raw who really wants to watch you know eric rowan versus you know santos or something i don't know but like it now it's like, no, I want to see all these judgment day matches and all this stuff. And so it's like, it feels like you're getting cheated, but it's also a testament to like, there's just that much stuff you would want to watch on raw. Where it's like, there's definitely been years where it's like, yeah, I don't need to watch um, big cast versus, you know, Enzo Amore. I actually don't need to, you could have actually cut that 20 minutes from raw, but we're just not in that phase. Yeah, I think that's the main difference is like we kind of to our mom's point, I got used to three hours worth of story. Like, you know what it is? It's like sometimes in some forms, like for me, I prefer a podcast that's like an at least like an hour and a half. So I know that I have time to like sit there with it versus one that's like a half hour, unless I'm like literally trying to do it for just like a half hour drive or something like that. But I'm like, I like to sit there, get into it listen to the whole thing because I like a lot of context. I like deep discussion and all that different stuff. And that's kind of like the that form, that long form of content, that experience at least with Raw had become that, especially after sitting through it, like you said, for those years of having to watch those matches and like now that was, those three hours feeling like a breeze, going now to the two hours and being like, oh shit, I can tell how they, they, they were like, okay, well, <laughs> let's cut this, let's cut this. Like watching people being like, you know, so, hey, how everyone? How's everyone doing? I came out here for this, and this is how I feel, and that's how I feel. Next nigga music, come on! Like I'm like, damn, all right, all right, relax. <laughs> like, geez, like it's like little things like that that I can feel as a viewer, where I'm like, yeah, this is, I can feel that they cut it. It's, all right, let's just get to 2025. Yeah. We're also old too, where it's like there's a whole generation of wrestling fans who may grow up with a two hour raw and like not know anything different, you know. But yeah, so. speaking of TVs, and oh, I'm sorry, I mean, injuries. No, I was going to say, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I can say all these explanations, but I just, and, you know, I'm, I'm definitely one of those people who, like, with other things, I'd, I'd be like, yo, c- give it a chance. Like, people just don't, mm-hmm. just don't like, people react negatively to new things sometimes. Like, give it a chance. I'm, as, as, and we talked about it last episode. We, we, we are very, like, rational wrestling fans. Like, what we like what we like and what we don't like, we just kind of, it's like, whatever. We just, you know, let it go. I'm doing my best to let it go, but this, this has been weird. This is like, yeah. like, this is like, this is like when, when the fucking iPhone, like changed, uh, changed the, 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 the like took away the, 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 the no, well, no, I, I actually didn't mind that, but took away the individual jack for the headphones and made it the same jack ah. as, as the charger. So you couldn't charge your phone and use the headphones at the same time. So then you had to convert to Bluetooth headphones. Like this is whack, but now I, under, I enjoy the, the splendor of AirPods. So it's like, you know, like it turned uh, into a victory at the end. I a hundred percent. That's how I felt when they moved NXT to Wednesdays. I'm like, I don't like this. I was like, <laughs> it just wants to fuck away. But my thing is more so just like, a, it's just like a, something I, I like don't understand, I guess, about people is like, as you guys know, with the whole Kevin Owens heel turn, which is something they're kind of teasing, it's kind of happening, but also like something that seems like they're unraveling. And there's a lot of people who have a lot of feelings about it. And they keep the thing that people keep talking about is like, oh, it happened off screen. And to me, it's like if they showed it to you and they're talking about it. It's not happening off screen. Like people make it seem like it happened on Reddit and people had to search and find out about it. Like it was on TV. Like, yes, they didn't do it the same way the Rock beat Cody Rose ass, but that's because they just had the Rock beat Cody Rose ass in that way. Like people just always talk about, I want things to be different. I want them to try things. And then something is different. And they're like, oh, well, not like that. And it's just, it's just so confusing to me where it's like, this is seems like the first 10% of this heel turn. And people are already like, well, they should have done it this way. It's like, you haven't even seen it yet. And again, like, 
it's not off screen if they're sitting here showing it to you. Like you, you just want it to be like spoon fed to you and everything is not spoon fed to people. Like people want nuanced stories, but they don't want to be nuanced readers. And it's just such a, like a frustrating thing I find, but yeah, just specifically the thing where it's like, well, it's off screen. It's like, you're talking about a video that's on raw right now. <laughs> so it's not off screen. Like it's, it's not like, it, that's not what that word means. I'm sorry. Like, and so it's just, that's just been a funny thing to me this week. I thought that was so dope too. Cause I, I was, again, I was at bad blood in the press conference, obviously. Uh, yeah. For those listening to the show who aren't familiar with me yeah, you, you heard my voice in the press conference twice. Um, but like I checked discord and I see like someone post, I'm like, yo, that's fucking cool. They have never done that. Like it almost felt like the times back in the day when a championship would change on a house show and like you would just be showed pictures of it or maybe video um but th- there was no like story attached to that i was like oh like this title just changed hands but they're actually advancing a story in a way where they're, they're bringing it to us like not just on tv but bringing it to social media however they you know um the machinations behind that brilliant i thought that was fucking awesome and now we're seeing like should happen on SmackDown to advance it, should happen on Raw to advance it. KO is continuing the social media stuff. He posted a video on Twitter talking about it, saying like they're not showing these videos. So if they do, I'll keep I'll keep doing shit on Twitter. Like I think I think it's really cool. It gives you more to look out too. Cause as a wrestling fan, all the social media content, like the bump, up, up, down, down, all that different stuff, it, it's a lot. It's a lot to pay attention to. They, they they do a lot on social media and I try, I try to keep up with a lot of it, but a lot of it doesn't really play into what happens on TV. But now it's like, okay, when WWE posts, I'm going to watch and pay attention to see like, okay, is this something that is like advancing a story? Is this just fun content? So it kind of makes you be even more of an engaged fan and really pay attention to things. So, and you get rewarded for paying attention. Like they've shown you that on TV, but now they're expanding it even more um so i i thought that was really cool yeah also like get over yourself like it's a kevin owens heel turn like he would you, you're not gonna be that stunt he's a bad guy like it, people act like they've never seen kevin owens jump somebody for it i'm like do you remember the festival of friendship what you was the whooping jericho's ass like, what was the last thing that happened before kevin and Co- like actually like what was what was part of kevin and cody's promo their story going into their match what happened Hale talked what? about all the people he he betrayed uh, oh oh <laughs> wasn't that just like what i don't know maybe like a month ago like two months ago geez like guys it was a very big light bulb i'm gonna need you i'm gonna here's here's what i'm gonna need you to do i'm gonna need you to go to your phone there's a setting you can limit it to about five six hours per day and then I'm going to need you to go look at something that has words on it that's not on a screen. <gasps> okay. And then you do that for like just a half hour. Just do it for a half hour. I trust you'll be able to remember things. You'll be able to remember things. You should do it. Crazy. God damn. Come on, guys. What are <laughs> we doing here? No, but um, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's just, I, I, I think it's kind of wild that people can have like such a, a short, uh, attention span like that and not only have like a short attention span but have like such whiplash like it's kind of weird um but uh that kind of like goes into to my uh (laughs) my sort of (laughs) my uh my topic which is uh (laughs) i don't know if i want to i don't want to say uh what the title of this is or should i say (laughs) my the title of mine is heavy as the sledgehammer pause you know (laughs) um but basically just talking about like you know heavy as the head is the uh, the crown whatever triple h's position you know like going back exactly to to what we were just talking about with having people so critical of what's going on in this moment i feel like with the advent of the internet since the internet's been a thing in the wwe in the wwe universe it's been something that's been really affecting towards the wwe both the superstars and the people like booking i would say at times not in the sense to where it's like a pressing matter but um one of the things like you know where you have like people not hearing what they want to hear in like interviews and stuff like that um or people having like answers that are like just you know not the right like answer for either a pr perspective or from like an actual like you know that's probably not what you should have said sort of like answer when you think about uh 
sort of like the responsibility and like the the sort of like breadth of all the stuff that's on the the weight that's on the the staff that's triple h and everybody that has to work for him and you think about like how even i don't like the two hour shows i'm still watching it faithfully i'm kind of like i'm making sure i watch every second like i went i went back earlier and made sure that i'm i'm caught parts that were like just before or just after a commercial break to make sure i didn't really miss anything the fact that you were that we've gotten to the point where we've gotten people so invested with all of that on your shoulder that shit is like kind of crazy to me so like to me i'm watching it as somebody who's like also like in my own ways trying to like help both myself and other people build these sort of things where like they're the ones that are really responsible or they're them and their teams and this is like a day-to-day sort of thing this thing could fall off if we make the wrong decision or whatever this is like like fuck it we doing this live sort of thing like as somebody who's like working with people like that and trying to like see what sort of things work for that seeing the their ability to like do hit after hit and even when it doesn't hit it can still go like that shit is like kind of crazy to me like and even them like kind of like running through sort of like running into issues like whether it be online or whatever or dealing with certain things that shows or dealing with certain things with um talent that that have fallen off over the time whether they're dealing with like personal issues or whatever or they just don't got it anymore or whatever i think their ability to sort of like pivot and and handle both those those good times with ease but also those bad times those like sort of slumps that they have where it's just like okay we don't really have like cool stories really going on right now but we're kind of setting up or whatever and not really lose people that shit is like i don't know how they've done that but like to me i'm just like oh that's kind of weird because you got to think about it they're doing this shit across what is it like five shows now technically is speed i mean you do digital bro it's like Like, this is what i mean i'm not talking about just the show sorry like to clarify what i mean this is across everything. Like, think of, look about the, the Bad Blood promo. You know how many times I've said just randomly, I was doing laundry and I was just like, how many fucking metros do you know? Like, I just, <laughs> that shit is like to be able to churn that shit out over and, this time. And CC, CC, lest you not it's forget, working. Monday Night Raw is the longest running episodic TV show in the history of television. That's there crazy. Is, there is not even anything, like, I'm not saying it's like, I mean, you don't say he's perfect, but like you said, there's From not a even logistic another, standpoint. There's this not is even like kind of crazy. It to. No, it is crazy. Yeah. There's nothing to compare to. There's no I'm looking other at it show that and I want to build things forever. that like kind of work in real time, sort of like this. So I'm looking at yeah. this and I'm like, yo, that's actually crazy that you you keep a through line so that I expect this. I almost expect the same sort of experience or sort of feelings every show, even if it's not the same little experience every every show. There's certain yeah. things that I expect to be standard. But it's like you have to make sure that the standard every time, even though you have a standard for making sure that it's standard, yeah. you're still doing that shit live. It's not like you set it up or whatever. And we came we came to see it a week later or whatever. No, you're not like it's not like Coachella prep where you get months to do this shit, bro. You got to break it down. Do it again. Break it down. Do it like it's crazy. And then in between that and on top of that, here's speed. Here's the vignettes. Here's, you know, here's blah, blah, blah. Here's showing up. Or here's fucking Samantha killing a goddamn uh uh, uh, national anthem and Rey Mysterio, or whatever, showing up at the the Raiders game and all that shit, and then being low key the best part about that experience. <laughs> like, bro, <laughs> I think about some of the the flights that they talk about getting on, where it's like, oh yeah, he was on NXT and then he was at this thing. It's like, bro, I would be exhausted. Like, I can't even think about the planning it would take to get someone essentially on a tour forever. Seth Rollins did a K. Seth Rollins was in kayfabe at a football game and did like a whole segment. Bro, K-fabe. they do like Good Morning America. Like they they are on TV every so like, week. Bro. I'm just saying, like the the sort of like the consistency that you see, like even with like moments where you dip, like you got to think about it. There was like such a moment where uh, for Jakara and Lash, like people were like, "Oh man, people interrupt it or whatever," and it's like literally by Monday, it's like, bro, or right, think we about got that covered. Think about some of your favorite spots, bro. Someone in the moment had to set up the pyrotechnics on a fucking casket so it would catch fire and not kill the Undertaker. And they crush that shit every time. You never can think about a time where like, oh, yeah, Kane came out once and set himself on fire. Like, no, that fire worked the right way every single time, every single Monday for years. 
but Bro, I think the execution a, is crazy, dog. That's especially what was different about this era is that they stepped it up. Like the level of production is better, but they're yeah. still handling it as well or mm-hmm. better. Even like to from the point of taking care of the wrestlers, like like you're hearing about the re- like CM Punk's talking about this shit. Like he's got a cushy corporate job with a nice 401k and yeah. shit. Like he's like, bro, it's great. I got benefits. Like this shit is crazy. It's like it's. I sometimes am just impressed by the sheer like production of it. Just like yeah. the man, you even remembered all of these marks while you're exhausted, and then the sound person hit the right button, or like just the all of the moving parts that have to be moving every single week. Not to even include house shows, it's like a feat of it's like truly impressive. Like it's, they have some of the best logistics in the world, and that's what I'll say. I think this shit should be stuck like in like because I know uh, I don't know if y'all ever took those classes. Like um, I know they got it in a communication school where they basically study how people do like uh, like the music media part uh, where it comes to not I don't want to say like the the PR of it, but basically how do we present this image, how, like the image yeah. of the artist or whatever the psychology and mm-hmm. all that shit about it. Like I think on the flip side of it they also like to look at the numbers and sort of like how the production mm-hmm. goes and the tours of that too i think there needs to be more study and and in looking into that less from like a business school perspective and more from like a system sort of artistic like how the fuck does this all work to get like look at this from a science perspective yeah but like how the shit how this like shit all works together bro this shit is crazy it's like, like i think that's how, yeah, yeah exactly sorry yeah that's how you need to look at it. You need to study it as an ecosystem. I think if that happens, if somebody were to undertake that, you would, mm-hmm. no pun intended, you would realize, I think you would like really discover some shit that like could be applied outside of like the WWE, which is why I think it works when they start to go outside of themselves. It's just really, I don't, they, they got the sauce right now. That shit is crazy. Yeah, I don't agree. Simple as that. <clears throat> so, that is our free show for the free listeners. But if you made it this far, there's no reason why you shouldn't just, you know, open up that wallet, open up that Patreon app, type in your credit card info, you know, throw a little bread to the A Show Network and come join us on Patreon because we be having fun over on Patreon. But for those who will not be joining us on Patreon, we hope that you enjoyed the episode. Once again, we are the men with the pen. This is the Rewriters Room, and we are rewriting the Bloodline story as always. Keep your pen sharp and make sure that the door to the rewriter's room is locked. We'll see y'all on Patreon. Patreon.